stop him. I couldn't. Charity. We heard you yelling all the way down the block. You all right? What happened? I tried to stop him, Miguel. I tried, but they drove off. And Grace and Sam, they don't know. They don't even know. What, what are you talking about? The danger. The danger that's waiting for them in the mountains. There's terrible danger. It's okay, Charity. Mom and Dad are in danger? <laughs> We're actually doing it, Sam. We are. <laughs> Our second honeymoon. I can't believe you planned the whole thing with me knowing nothing. You think I did that for you? Mm -mm. I did that for myself. I wanted some uninterrupted downtime with my wife. <laughs> you are all mine. Well, that is all I want to be. Yours. I love you, Sam Bennett. And I'm going to show you just how much. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I don't, I'm going to have a great time finding out. I love you too, Grace Bennett. Are we there yet? <laughs> well, a little bit longer. I can hardly wait. I mean, how smart was that, not telling anybody where we are? I mean, nobody knows. Nobody's gonna be there to disturb us. I mean, was that a stroke of genius or what? Um, actually, I did tell Charity. Just Charity. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, who's Charity gonna tell that's gonna disturb us? <laughs> Violet, I'm sorry I've forgotten your name. Donald, Mrs. Crane. Donald, do we have an ETA on Snow Mountain? I'm afraid there might be a delay, ma'am. The resort's private airstrip is under a foot of snow. Until they get it plowed, I... No! You radio the control tower and you tell them I don't care if they have to shuttle it by hand. They're going to clear that runway. We're landing as scheduled. I'm not sure that's possible. Don't argue, Donald. Just do it. Otherwise, you're going to be looking for a new job. Yes, Mrs. Crane. We have to get there before Sam and Grace arrive. I've got to make my special arrangements. Oh, this has to work. It just has to. How could I have been so stupid? I made such a stupid, stupid mistake. This should have been our second. I'm sorry if I startled you. I hope you like the flowers. The, the flowers, the, they're exquisite. But you shouldn't have, Hank. I mean, they, they must have cost a fortune. Oh, well, they'll be worth every penny if I get a proper thank you. Hey, Luis. You're on your own tonight, buddy. I've got a date. off your finger? No, it, it, it still won't come off. Uh, Mama even tried, but it, there's no knot. Yeah, let me try again. Ethan, what are you doing? Did I just see a ring on your finger, Teresa? Mm. What? But now I'm certain I saw a ring. I think I'm entitled to an explanation. Ethan, I'm waiting. What's going on here? I would hold the hand of the one who could lead me places And kiss the lips of the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high Well, what's going on? What's going on? You are hiding something from me, both of you. Oh, uh, no. Teresa just hurt her finger, and she's in a lot of pain. She is? Teresa, I'm so sorry. May I see it? Because if it's really bad... I'm sorry. I have no idea what you're saying. Well, I believe she said there's nothing you can do, right, Teresa? 
You know, it's probably a good idea you put some ice on it to numb it. That's a great idea, honey. Teresa, why don't you go to the kitchen and make yourself an ice pack? Um, why don't we go upstairs to my bedroom? Why? I don't have something I want to go. Hmm. Oh, uh, you know what? I just remembered there's something I need to tell Teresa. My mother wanted me to tell her. You go on up. I'll be right, right up there. All right, well, don't be long. OK, I won't. Teresa, Gwen saw a picture of the ring. What picture? The picture the store owner gave me for insurance purposes. That's not the point. You need to get that ring off your finger ASAP. Look, I don't care how you do it. Just get it off. I knew it. I knew that Gwen would discover the ring. But she didn't, Mama. She still doesn't know it's on my finger. Not yet. You claim you love Ethan. With all of my heart. I don't see it, Teresita. Mama, how can you say that? You know how deeply in love with him. When you love someone, really love them, you put their interest first, ahead of your own. Mama, I do. All I see is you playing these stupid games that will only end up hurting Ethan, causing him pain, and Gwen, too. You are so wrong about me. I wish I were, Teresita. But I'm afraid you've got a lot to learn about love. Hey, I hope you have a good time. Well, you don't have to hope. We will. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, well, I'd love to stay and chat, but uh, <laughs> a stack of paperwork. In fact, I have something in the car. Yeah, I saw your desk. It looks like a recycling center. Yeah, you know, I have to appear before the city council at their next fund meeting. Ask them to renew their commitment to the youth center. Which means they'll want to look at the books, so <laughs> got to be prepared, right? Well, you go ahead and cook your books, amigo. We'll catch you later. Yeah, I'll see ya. You did know that the roses and the invitation were from me, didn't you? Or did you really want to go out with Luis tonight? This had better be good news. Very good, Mrs. Crane. The resort's runway has been cleared and we'll be landing ahead of schedule. Excellent. I'm beginning our descent, so please buckle up. Thank you. Sam won't be happy to see me at first. Not at first. But then he'll realize that this is right. That it's always been right. And then when we leave the lodge, we'll leave together. And start our new life. Together. <laughs> you remember the first time we came up here? <laughs> the coldest day of the year. <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't mind. We were newly married and we had our love to keep us warm. Yeah, and that was about the only thing, because the gremlin sure wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we put a lot of miles on that good old car. Yeah, a lot of cold ones. Remember, the heater was out of whack, so it was either off or, like, blowing like a furnace. <laughs> we had to roll down the back windows so that we didn't just, like, roast. Yeah, it was a combination of, like, icy cold air blowing in the back and blasting hot air coming out of the front um, vents. Kept it kind of normal. Kinda, yeah, sort of. But God bless that car. Got us all the way up the mountain and back again. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> mm, you've come a long way, Sam. A very long way. And I've loved every minute of it. I wouldn't trade a day of my life with you and a thousand lives with any other woman. I can't wait to get to the fire. <laughs> Start our second honeymoon. Mm. The charity. We have to go get them back. Why are you feeling this? What do you think is wrong? They don't know. They don't even know. We have to warn them. I'm calling their cell phone. Where did I put that piece of paper? Mom just wrote down their new number for me, and I know I have it here somewhere. God, where could it be? I want you to try to relax. 
I can't. I can't. Not while they're out there. You think they're out in the mountains and they're in some kind of danger? The mountains? How do you know they're in the mountains? I thought where they were going was supposed to be a secret. Why are you feeling this way? Did, did you see something on TV or, or hear it on the radio? Was there an avalanche? Maybe the police department called looking for Chief Bennett. Is that it? Or did someone make a threat of some kind? You know one of those people Chief Bennett arrested? Terrible danger. They're in terrible danger. Found it. We have to get them back. We have to warn them before it's too late. Come on. Come on. It's ringing. Hello? Mom, it's me. Okay. Are you guys okay? You're sure it wasn't on TV or the radio? The tea leaves. What? I read it in the tea leaves. The what? You what? Okay, what happened? Nothing. Why did you yell like that? I didn't. I just, um... Simone was outside and I couldn't hear, so I was yelling. I just, I just wanted to wish you guys a good time because I didn't see you before you left. Let me speak to her. Oh, here's your dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, it's me. Hi, Dad. You know we have some people coming by to check on you. Your Uncle Hank and even TC. I know, I'll be nice to them. I'm not worried. Nope. I don't have a worry in the world. Hey, we'll see you when we get back. Have fun. They're okay? They didn't once mention any danger, but then again, they weren't reading tea leaves. Want to explain what that was all about? The tea leaves in the bottom of my cup. I was reading them, and I saw... You saw? The only thing you did was scare me half to death. What is the matter with you? Okay. No, Simone. I have some things to say, and they're going to be said right now. Oh, may I help you? Yes, I have a reservation and a request for a particular room. Oh, that's entirely unnecessary, madam. All our rooms are identical, with almost exactly the same view of the mountain. <laughs> no, I don't think you understand. I want the room next to Grace and Sam Bennett's. I called ahead and spoke to someone, and they said it shouldn't be a problem. Well, I don't know who you would have spoken to, but, uh, well, may I have your name? Ivy Crane. Oh, yes, we have you in a very nice room in the south end. South end, north end. I really don't care as long as it's next to the Bennetts. If you're unhappy with your accommodations, I suggest you try one of the other resorts in the area. Do you know who I am? Uh, Mrs. Do um, you know who owns this place? I do indeed. AC Properties. Oh. And the AC would stand for? Um, I, uh... I, I don't... Uh... A.C. As an Alistair Crane. And I am Mrs. Julian Crane, wife of Julian Crane, son of Alistair Crane, heir to the Crane billion. So I suggest you rethink that nice little room in the south end and get me what I want, or I will have this establishment torn down and leveled, and you will be selling snowshoes in Siberia. <laughs> Sheridan, who do you really want to go out with tonight? I'm so looking forward to going out with you tonight, Hank. We'll have a great time. Hey, Sheridan, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Okay, I know you collect miniature horses, and I found these at a garage sale today, so... Oh, there you go. <laughs> you shouldn't have. <laughs> oh, hey, Louise. Hey, Beth. Hey. How's it going? Good. This is really sweet of you. I, I can't thank you enough. Oh, sure. You see that? At least we know our future wives can get along together. My Sheridan and your Beth. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, whatever you say. Well, I say that since Sheridan's going out with me tonight, uh, I guess you'd have to figure that you didn't make much of an impression on her. See, I told you. It's going to be me and Sheridan happily ever after. I love him, Mama. I love Ethan so much, and I know Gwen isn't the right girl for him. What you think doesn't matter. 
One can never make him as happy as I can. She almost saw the ring on your finger, and Ethan showed her a picture of it. It makes no difference, Mama. Teresa, why is it that you're so blind? Ethan knows that if Gwen sees that ring on your finger, she will never wear it. No matter what, she won't wear it. Not permanently. Fate made Ethan put this ring on my finger. Just stop it. You drive me crazy with all this talk about fate. Okay. I won't talk about it anymore. You have to do me a favor, Mama. What favor? If Gwen asks, you'll confirm what Ethan told her that I just hurt my finger. No. I'm tired of lying. I won't cover for you anymore. Mama, it's not lying. I mean, not exactly. Are you never going to realize that your actions have consequences? Teresa, think. Think about what you're doing. I beg you, stop the deceit and do the right thing. Said you want to talk to me about something? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Um. Well? You know, that new laptop I got? I really like using it. You should get one, too. Ethan, we already had this conversation. We did? Yeah, last week when you showed it to me. I did see a ring on Teresa's finger, didn't I? I know exactly what's going on here, Ethan. I've got it all figured out, and I can't believe what you've done. You really think you're going to marry Sheridan, huh? You're having a hard time believing that, aren't you? Uh, doesn't matter what I believe. It's what Sheridan feels. Yeah, well, once she gets to know me, she'll realize that she can't live without me. Is that what you think? Yeah. Same as you and Beth. You know, I've always thought you two were perfect for each other, even way back in junior high. OK, Hank, I need those biceps you're always bragging about. What? Outside. I got some used sports equipment at the garage sale. I thought you could use it down here. Well, ask Luis for help. He's the lifter and hauler. Yeah, and Luis has stuff to do in the office, so stop goofing around and start flexing. You know, this is a great girl you got here. She's always looking out for you. <laughs> Let's go. I really had a great time with you last night. You did? Of course. Didn't you? I had a very good time. I'm glad. As a matter of fact, I, I thought that... <sighs> what? You, you, you thought what? How could you do that, Charity? Come on. How could you let me think my parents were in danger? I saw. Yeah, in the damn tea leaves. We heard, but you didn't tell us that to begin with. Stop it, Kay. And you sure as hell didn't tell us it was a premonition and not for real. I'm sorry, Kay. I don't know why these premonitions hit me so hard, but they do. Look, Kay, I understand that you're upset, but you need to cut Charity a little slack here. I didn't mean to yell at her, but she scared me. But it's over now. Right? Your mom and your dad are all right. Yeah, they are. Charity. Boy, you sure know a way to put your foot in your mouth. Now you've got Miguel mad at you. I said I was sorry, didn't I? But you didn't mean it, and he knew. Wait a minute. Yes. What now? I think I just figured out a way to get off the hook with Miguel. And it might even bring us closer together. Charity, what is it? Tell me. I'm still getting this feeling, Miguel. I can't seem to shake it. Aunt Grace and Sam are in danger. Well, I see no activity, no switching of reservations, no shuffling of keys. I will give you 10 seconds. I, um, well, it, it, it's, it's, uh... <sighs> Is there a problem here? Well, there won't be in seven seconds, because he will be out in the snow. Uh, Mrs. Crane. <laughs> I had no idea you were coming today. Yes, I've already arrived. 
And my request for a particular room has been denied. Nonsense. You can have any room you wish. See to it. I take it you're the manager. Well, actually, I was just the assistant last time you were here, but uh, Mr. Crane was kind enough Whatever. to... Whatever. Yes, of course. What about my room? You're all set, Mrs. Crane. <laughs> and uh, I will inform the Bennets that you're here the moment that they arrive. No. You will do no such thing. They are not to know. As you wish, madam. You will proceed, Mrs. Crane, to the room and see that it is properly prepared. Yes, sir. It's starting to come together. In fact, it's working perfectly. Being in the next room to Sam and Grace will make it simple to implement my plan. Oh, yes. Everything is going to work out exactly the way I imagined it. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Crane? Whenever you're ready, it's right this way. Hmm. Now, Charity and Miguel seem so happy together. It's nice to see them getting closer. We sure see a lot of each other. <laughs> Hey, you remember that story you told me in the Lobster Shack about the poor boy who fell in love with the rich girl and how her family forced them apart? And she married another man. I'm just so glad that that is not gonna happen to Charity and Miguel. I don't think I could bear it if it did. I mean, just imagine, years from now, Charity regretting that things didn't work out with Miguel. Okay, just... no more stories about other couples and things not working out. Let's, let's concentrate on us. Our love. It's just that I think that that rich girl was truly in love with that poor boy. I think she thinks about him to this very day. Oh, Sam. I'm so glad you're here. I love you so much. It's okay. I mean, that was close with as a moose. Well, it's a good thing we didn't hit him. I mean, those things weigh a couple of tons. Are those things supposed to be hibernating or something? Well, somebody didn't tell him. Oh, oh my God. God. I am so sorry, Grace. Oh, Sam, I mean, you didn't see him. I didn't see him to the last second. <laughs> Maybe your heart's pounding. I thought we were going to crash. You know, something like that makes you realize how precious time really is. Hey, you don't want me to lose control again? <laughs> no. It's so wait till we get back to the room. I can't wait. We're gonna have a fabulous time. All by ourselves. And no one there to disturb us. Nobody knows where we are. I trust everything will meet with your approval, Mrs. Crane? Uh, yes, I'm sure I'll be quite comfortable here. And if there's anything else I can do? Actually, there is. I would like you to unlock the adjoining door. Uh, but I thought you didn't want the Bennets to know that you're here. I don't. But if you open the door, you can rest assured that there'll be a very large tip for you when I check out. It would be our pleasure to serve you. Mm. <clears throat> One more thing. I would like you to personally escort the Bennets to their room. Don't worry, Mrs. Crane. I'll be with them every step of the way. Mm. And uh, your bags will be up shortly. Oh, thank you very much. You're
was going to say it was... Man, Beth hit the jackpot. You gotta see this baseball gear. It's almost brand new. Come on. Wow, that is fantastic. <laughs> I was getting ready to throw out all the old stuff. It's all worn out. Mike Piazza, eat your heart out, buddy. Wow. You, know, you really came through. But then again, you always do. You're always there when I need something. Thanks. You don't have to thank me, Louise. You know that. Now, I'm not going to tell you what I've got planned for tonight. Just dress casual. Casual? Yeah, something comfortable, you know, no tiara. <laughs> right. But I will promise you this. Tonight is going to be one special time. Something totally different. Therese is engaged. Uh, what makes you think that? Well, why else would she have a ring on her finger? A ring? You know, I'm still feeling pretty guilty about being so suspicious about Therese. I mean, maybe I can make it up to her by helping her plan her wedding. Well, that's a pretty big jump, don't you think? Why do you say that? Well, uh, I, are you, I don't think I really saw a ring on her finger. I mean, are you sure you saw a ring? I'm almost sure. Almost? Look, it doesn't matter how nice her ring is, because it is nowhere near as beautiful as my ring. Because I have the most wonderful, most generous fiancé. Oh, wait, it's not official yet. The most generous boyfriend in the whole world. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Wait, w where? I want to go downstairs. I want to see exactly what Teresa's ring looks like. Well, <laughs> but what if she doesn't want to show us the ring? Ethan, are you kidding? What girl doesn't want to show off her engagement ring? Come on. Please let Teresa get that ring off her finger. If she doesn't, and Gwen sees it... <sighs> Am I gonna do... I think, Teresa, I think there has to be something. Teresa! Yes, Gwen? I am almost positive I saw a ring on your finger before. If it's the one I think it is, I want you to show it to me right now. You're right. I did see a ring on my finger. Do you really want to see it? I most certainly do. Okay. They've always been like that. What? Beth and Louise. They have so much in common, you know? I mean, they, they're so happy together. They've, they could sweep and mop this floor and have a good time. Yeah, they, uh, they seem very close. Been like that since seventh grade. You know, I've always thought that they were meant to be together. Really? Yep. And all of our friends in Harmony expect them to settle down and do the white picket fence thing, and we're just waiting for Louise to realize it. Yes, I see. Oh, hey, um, it's a good thing I thought about it. If we're gonna do all the things that I planned for our date tonight, you need to ask Luis if, um, he'll let you cut out earlier or something. Okay, I'll, I'll ask him. You curious at all? I'm sorry? About what we're doing tonight. Oh, of course, but you won't tell me, will you? Nope. It's a surprise. Good. <laughs> That way, I'll enjoy it even more. I'll go ask Louise if I can leave early. Okay. I'm gonna go make some phone calls. Okay. I wanted to talk to you, Louise. Yeah, sure. What's up? Our future. What do you see for you and me? You know, down the line, the future. Tea time. Kay brewed up a pot of authentic Chinese tea. It's kind of a peace offering. An apology for snapping at you earlier. Oh, you don't have to apologize, Kay. I understand completely. And I shouldn't let my premonitions get to me like that. You've been really good about this, Kay. Thanks. See, I told you Miguel would forgive me. He can't stay mad at me for long. How's your tea, Charity? It's delicious. It what? Nothing. 
It's nothing. Here we go. Looney Tunes time. Do you see something, Charity? I don't want to say. Hey. It's all right. Wasn't I born a vapid blonde? Why couldn't I come up with a stunt like this to get Miguel to comfort me? We're all your friends, Charity. I mean, you can tell us. What is it? What do you see? It's horrible. It's so horrible. I thought I was positive I saw a stone. Well, you, you actually, you did. Uh, but. You see, I'm in a bad situation. I, I promised not to wear this ring, and I did anyway, and now it's stuck on my finger. Stuck? It won't come off, and since I can't keep my promise not to wear the ring, the least I can do is not show anybody the diamond. <laughs> that's cute, don't you think, Ethan? Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> well, anyway, congratulations are in order. I think Chuck is a great guy, not to mention lucky. <sighs> Thanks. And, look, I'm, I'm really sorry about everything I put you through. Oh, please, don't give it another thought. Well, I can't wait till I get my ring and we can compare. When you get yours officially, of course. Won't that be fun? <laughs> I can show you a picture, though. Isn't it exquisite? Valentine's Day. I am almost 100% sure that's when Ethan's going to give it to me. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, imagine having something this beautiful on your finger. Well, I, I do have a pretty vivid imagination. You have such a lovely sense of humor, Teresa. I'm surprised I didn't notice it before. Anyway. So, shall we? Mm. Yes. You know, Teresa, I am sure I can get that ring off your finger. Will you let me help you? Tell us what you saw in the tea leaves. Not something else about my parents, I hope. I can't tell. There were lots of different people and things. Broken things. What, broken arms, broken legs? Was it a train wreck or something? No. It wasn't a physical pain. It was an emotional pain. I see hearts, so many broken hearts. It's awful. So many broken hearts. So will you let me help you take the ring off? You know what, I, I, I've tried everything. I'm afraid I'll just have to wait for the swelling in my, my finger to go down. <laughs> All right, if you're sure. Can you do me a, a favor and, and not mention the ring to my mother? Sure. My family doesn't know my boyfriend all that well yet, so I haven't told her. You know, I don't want to worry. You know how moms are. Of course. Well, mom's the word. Well, I can't wait until we're both officially engaged. <laughs> okay. Where is it? Gwen, what are you doing? I know it's in here somewhere, and it's only a matter of time before I get it. <laughs> well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. You continue to deceive. Mama, please. It will only come back to haunt you, Teresa. You're wrong, Mama. One day, this ring is going to be mine, for real. This is Gwen's ring, and she will wear it. And when that happens, when that happens, Teresa, I will be here to comfort you, to help you mend your broken heart. Mama, I am going to wear this ring. It will be mine. Ethan will never break my heart. I heard about your date with Sheridan. <laughs> Come on, it, it was only one date. I know, but I also heard about the two of you dancing the tango at your mom's party and then the other day here at the center. 
Look, I've got nothing against Sheridan. She's a nice woman. I do like her. But I always thought it might be you and me. You know, that we could have a future together. I just like an honest answer, Luis. Am I being a fool waiting around for you? Am I just wasting my time while you try to build a future with Sheridan? I'd just really like to know. I think Mrs. Bennett should go first. Thank you. Is everything all set in there? Everything you requested and more, sir. Great. Thank you. Thanks. 